Hey yo pretty people, my name is Lex and welcome back to decidedly one of friends. In the previous episode we killed the dragon in this one. Well, let me tell you something. It's been a while since the last episode. Like um I know it came out this week, but in real life there's been just a bunch of time between the time I recorded that dragon fight and the time of me recording this right now. But this whole time I was actually walking on my actual uh, real life walk walk. And as a result, I didn't have much time or really, uh, you know, power <laughs> left in me to just record another Decide the Vanilla episode. However, I was still playing the game. I was casually playing Minecraft and believe it or not, when I do that, apparently amazing friggin things happen. You can do just enormous amount of stuff. If you just casually, uh, you know, launch Minecraft whenever you feel like uh, distressing yourself quite a bit. So, what happened in between the videos, I hear you ask? Well, quite a bit, and also mostly in the nether. Now, you see, right now, the Sadly Vanilla nether hub is my just kind of a bit of a mess. Last time where we left it off, it was basically stuck in a limbo, waiting for Pixel Reefs or whoever we have assigned to work on the uh, on the project to finally come up with some sort of a design and make something out of it. And since most good designs in Minecraft actually take time and resources, more, more importantly, um, the starter tool Pixel Reefs couldn't just go ahead and do it. He actually needed to figure it all out. In the meantime, the sadly vanilla nether was just a mess. Guts flying everywhere, giant fields of fire and nothing else between the portals, and it still kinda is that type of a mess. But thanks to Zloy XP, the Dark Lord, all praise him. Ah, times have tiny bit changed. You see, you already know that my own nether portal thingy magic in the nether is pretty friggin' baller, okay? So what I did is I decided to kind of spread the beauty of it all around. And so began the temporary nether hub of the Sadly Vanilla. These tunnels were designed and built by yours truly, with the sole purpose of one day being abandoned by, you know, everybody but me. But more on that later. You see, when we do actually come out with a proper nether hub for the season, we will just build one, but on top of the one I'm currently trying to assemble. So now we still need to visit each other somehow, and that's where I came in. Randomly throwing together random blocks that I had laying around, and a couple of those that I just felt like experimenting with, I have created a network of tunnels leading to all the bases nearby my own base. Serving as the main lane currently is my own nether tunnel. Uh, it is basically leading almost all the way out to the spawn. Now, at the end of this tunnel is a giant ladder downwards to the fields of fiery death that is the, currently the spawn nether portal but here out here in this deep in this branch you can see there's a, a tunnel to our favorite silent whisperer you can see it's decorated with both uh, nether brick and and chorus uh, brick and yeah this is basically one the most boring design out of the whole bunch uh, because it's just, it's kind of plain it's basically just uh, horus bricks on top of the nether brick this is also all, all this was basically just my experiment uh, to see if i can make chorus bricks look kind of all right in the nether and i don't know you tell me if that actually succeeded this tunnel goes for quite a while turns a left and then it will it will get connected to silent whispers base and Later, I want to hook up BJW's portals and uh, the portal to the end dimension to, to it. Um, on the other side is my favorite portal out of, the, all, all out of them all. Not only because it leads to Pixel Rifts and Papa Beastie, who I love to annoy sometime later, but also because it was kind of an experiment in itself. You can check out, it's built with red nether brick, which is something I never built with, and it kind of combines magma blocks, nether, uh, red nether brick, dark oak wood and gray and yellow and all of these colors that shouldn't mesh, really, not that much somehow suddenly make a lot of sense when you walk in it's just it's a it's a it's a very fun tunnel i loved walking on this one especially since it actually um 
kind of shook me out of my comfort zone and made me gather some materials that I usually wouldn't gather, such as nether rock for nether bricks and of course uh, nether wood for uh, also red nether bricks. So yeah, that's how I get to pixel roof nowadays and that's how I can get to uh, Papa Beastie and there are two to three more tunnels leading, uh, branching off into everybody else's bases. One is to Schnicks and Z, who, yeah, is basically a stairway, and it's made out of sandstone because that's what his entire house is currently made of. Another to Frip and, yeah, shortest tunnel ever. And finally, another one to Mythical Sausage, which is one I don't know. I'm very happy of it, but it's not the one I'm most proud of. I was trying to go for the uh, piratey look because he has like a pirate cough to himself, which is why I used the planks to signify a ship and you know sh uh, some sort of a some sort of a ship. Okay, ships are made out of wood, which is why I used planks. At the very end, there are two more paths. One uh, basically leading into the outer nether, into the uh, tunnel, uh, into the, you know, potential tunnel, potential route. Bam. Uh, to Nash Crafter down there and to, I don't remember, somebody else down there and Pigglesworth down there. And then, of course, there is this ladder down to spawn. This project is quite an undertaking, literally, because we go into the nether, get it? Haha, <laughs> pun. But at the same time, it is also incredibly dangerous. There's lava and fire and death everywhere. So what I decided, and like that's the reason why I stopped doing anything, is that I will not continue this project until I have a new to infinite supply of... Uh, do I have arrows? I do have arrows. Uh, a near infinite supply of fire resistance potion. Because earlier this week, Silent Whisper already had to uh, rescue me from an, uh, from a lava pit because I apparently fell into it and thankfully I logged off in time. So he just, what he did is he actually dug into the lava lake and created a little chamber around me with a fire resist explodey potion. And that was really nice of him. So yeah, thank you Silent, you are my hero. Okay, so I've been walking on grabbing a bunch of, you know, blaze rods uh, in here for blaze powder, for magma, for fire resistance potions. Um, we we'll obviously already have a slime farm, uh, courtesy of pixel reefs, but then as I was fa farming and, you know, mucking about, I kind of realized how much really fire resist do I want? Well, for just for the sake of argument, let's say a double chest of potions of fire resist, uh, eight minute ones, obviously. Okay, let's think. Uh, one single chest is 3 by 9, that's 27. Uh, and a single magma cream will give me 3 potions. I don't know why I'm showing you these numbers using my uh, actual in, in real life fingers. Because obviously you cannot see that in the webcam. I'm sorry, I'm weird. So, <laughs> when we basically get uh, 9 by 3, but then divided by 3, because every... Every single one, uh, every single magma cream will give me three, uh, three potions, right? So that's back to nine, and a double chest will make eighteen. So I have really no idea why I gather nearly two stacks of blaze rods. I mean, I guess they will be useful for like later, but at the same time, come on, Zloy, learn your basic maths. You know what, guys? Screw you. I'm going home. Actually, I'm going to Pixlerus, he has a slime farm somewhere out there. I need to grab 18 slime uh, slime balls from him. So here we are, 18 slime balls, exactly the amount we will need for a double chest of fire resistance. Now, of course, that double chest will do, do us no good if we don't actually drink the potions, but whatever, that's a problem for future Zloy. To Zloy of today is brewing potions. So what we could do right now is we could place a potion brewer, but this there, this there, go like grab a bunch of nether wood, that kind of stuff. I already have a bit of a farm for it, but screw that. It's boring. I don't want to. I don't wanna. Instead, let's go check out this thing. I present to you the potion brewer 9000. It's basically the slowest one Ever, but I came up with it, I made it myself, and I'm very proud of it. So, check it out. This machine here 
is basically dot easy redstone it's just a couple of you know repeaters couple of just, but yeah uh, this one has zero like no additional ticks on it these three are on full ticks and what they do is check this out check this out this is the output right now it is set to brew awkward portions because this dropper is filled with nether wood. once i press z button this hopper is unlocked and later this hopper is unlocked and after uh, and while they are unlocked also this dispenser this dropper is firing into this hopper which places the ingredient in here that sounded very complicated but in reality it looks basically like this see basically it gets instantly recharged it puts all the necessary things in at the same time itself automatically which is why i love it so so much the problem of course is that i'm not sure that this this dropper is necessary at all first and uh, second is that so right now it is on manual mode and it can also only make basically awkward portions because like it can only sustain one single ingredient at the same at, at the same time it's not really programmable not at all uh like if you make a bigger one and like much much more ambitious one yeah it will be programmable and you will be able to like set up several ingredients at the same time but this one was actually made with the intention that every minute this button will be pressed if not by me then by some sort of a uh, timer which i'll still have to come up with and yeah any timer will do at this point like a half a minute or a minute timer is really easy to do in minecraft Pro i'll probably just hook up an ifa clock to it so yeah as long as this is activated this machine will be re resetting itself granted it has like all the necessary items here all the necessary bottles down here all the stuff that is necessary and so check this out right now we need like three more to complete two double chests of awkward portion so we'll just press a button it goes it resets it brews and then it drops into here when when when, when the next time button is pressed so yeah it's a pretty easy setup but how do we make it work with multi-ingredient ones the only way I figured uh, I could probably do this is either to reset the input into a programmable one where it wouldn't just be one dropper that drops uh, drops an ingredient into the hopper, but maybe another two droppers with, say, uh, magma cream and redstone. And then all I would have to change is I would have to change from a minute timer to say a three minute timer for each ingredient to be properly implemented. Like right now, if there was another dropper that would drop a magma cream after the uh, nether what was already in, then it would gloop, 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 gloop. And then if there was a third one that would also drop a redstone dust. Then it will gloop, 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 even, even better. So, yeah, I need to kind of reconsider and refigure it out. But my butt feels like there's something in here. And I probably can remake this into a proper AFK potion brewer. Just let me, let me fiddle a bit. Let me try some stuff out. Here we go experimenting. This here is the default hopper clock right uh this is where we will be probably pulling the signal and uh, for the timer so here i am dropping a stack of items in it and also a single oh wait no 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 that's the wrong ingredient you did oh whatever that doesn't matter doesn't matter we can wait we can wait uh the goal here is to watch if this fires off, when this fires off that this here okay glug 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 so here's my logic instead of uh, making free dispenser firing in a sequence at a, at a single hopper why don't we make free dispensers firing in a sequence not in a sequence at all but at the same time at a hopper chain logic being that bam 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 i said i said bam when i say bam you're supposed to there we go Logic being that whatever gets in this hopper will instantly anyway be after whatever gets into this hopper if they if all of them get there in the same time. As a result, the items in the final hopper out here will line up perfectly in a recipe, aka uh, 
you know, nether wart, nether wart, magma cream, redstone dust. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna magma cream, redstone dust, and we're also gonna yoink, and nether wart. There we go, nether wart, magma cream, redstone dust, and now we need a button to test it all out. And I know I had one somewhere out here. Maybe I just placed it to get rid of it, to free up my inventory. So, here's a button. Here's a me. I'm like, haboink. It's important to not uh, mistake a haboink for habush. Habush is an entirely different thing. And yeah, would you look at that? The recipe actually did line up. So it makes perfect sense. Instead of making uh, free dispenser firing, uh, free dispensers firing on this side, we'll make free dispenser firing on this side, and we will also hook up the entire contraption to it, making them fire at the same time, making this reset, which we already organized, and making this uh, timer wait for all of it to be properly brewed. Also, mundane potion is just refusing to brew, apparently. I'm gonna regret the Santai. Oh no, it's actually kind of okay, kind of alright. Alright, pre-final run. This button and this repeater will do basically equivalent, right, of uh, what they're supposed to. I'm pretty sure the length of signal is enough for this to still work properly. All in all, if I didn't screw it up somewhere royally, we should have ourselves a nice potion brewer uh, for, you know, free ingredient ones at the very least. So let's see. Single run, test, go. There we go. Nether what? And once it does glug glug glug, then um, yeah, everything else should work out pretty much perfectly. How about the... Oh. Uh, hi. Yes. What is your... Did I seriously not... I did. Then what is... Ah, that explains. That explains everything. This block it shouldn't be here. And there we go, everything fixed. Ha. Huh. I'm, I'm so great. And the last ingredient is about to be smelterated. So that's great, that's cool, that's epic, that's awesome. The problem right now is that my storage for the potions is kind of full. And it wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't full with regular awkward ones. So that's a bit of a whoopsie. I can't even really redirect them right now easily into my own potion brewer. I will just have to dig out all the nether wart out of the system <laughs> and disable disable this one dispenser to ensure that the rest will actually brew the way I want them to. The test rating shall commence. Haploink. It just hit me that even time lapse in this won't be really awfully exciting, would it? And once again, it only had enough time to put one portion into this. <sighs> I mean, but the rest of it works. So I'm guessing all it will take for me is to fiddle with some timings. And then it will be just fine. And after many, many reconfigurations and a lot of Russian swear words, we got this thing. Yeah, this monument, monolith of contraption. Uh, I even ran out of ingredients while trying to figure out all the timings. And right now, the timings say that... Yeah, <laughs> not, not much actually. The problem here and right now, the only remaining problem is that whenever I try to brew for free potions, it used to be that it would only brew one. Now the problem is that it brews uh, three, but also skips one awkward portion into the bunch. So I don't know, maybe it's something about this competitor. I should free out, uh, free out of four instead of four out of four. Maybe it's about one of the other ones. I have no idea. 
So let me know in the comments. Maybe you do know how to build this thing. And I know, I know that, that there's plenty of, uh, r you know, resources and tutorials on how to build this type of contraption on the internet. Some of them don't work at this point. Some of them work too well. I just felt like trying to figure this one out for myself, by myself, for once in this stupid world. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, do leave a like. Do let me know in the comments if you want to see like more and what you want to see more of. That's the thing though. More of this, more of that, more of the nether project, more of my own island, more of the zombie prankage, which we will obviously and absolutely return to maybe next week and maybe this one. Uh, but for now, that's gonna be it for today. Thank you. Thank you so much for continuing. That was my cat. One, two of my cats. So yeah, I'm gonna go sort that out. Sorry. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This has been Zloy XP. This has been Decidely Vanilla. To be continued, have a good one. Bye-bye.